Um, all right. Hi, everybody. I'm Elizabeth, and this is the Youth Voices Advocacy and Activism panel. I have some youth here, some local youth who are going to talk about their participation in advocacy and activism in the community. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves. If uh, Abby, you want to go ahead and go first. Hi, my name is Abby Leach, and I'm going to be a senior at Atherton High School this fall, and I am here on behalf of the Louisville Youth Philanthropy Council. Awesome. Thank you so much, Abby. Um, Andrew, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, so my name is Andrew Kelmanson. I'm an incoming junior at DuPont Manual High, and I'm the co-chair on the We Day Youth Board. So. Awesome. Thank you so much, Andrew. Um, Natalie, if you want to go ahead. Yeah, hello. My name's Natalie Dufour. I live in Frankfurt. I'm going to be a senior at Franklin County High School, and I am representing Kentucky Youth Climate Strike today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Natalie. Uh, Sarah, you can go ahead. Hi, my name is Sarah Burbank. I'm going to be a senior at South Oldham High School, and I'm representing a group called Green Commonwealth. Awesome. Thank you all so much. So now we'll go ahead and get into the questions. Um, so first, I wanted to kind of provide everybody watching with um, a definition of um, advocacy and a de definition of activism to start off this panel. Um, so advocacy is defined as public support for or recommendation of a particular cause um, or policy. Um, and it's also the profession of or work of a legal um, advocate, which obviously none of you all are legal advocates, but you definitely are volunteer advocates. Um, and activism is defined as the policy or action of using vigorous campaigning to bring about political or social, social change. Um, and with that said, I would love for you all to um, explain to us when you have participated in advocacy or activism in your community um, by telling us a story or giving us an example um, or kind of explaining the group that you're representing what they do, um, which would be great. Um, Abby, if you wanna go ahead and go first. So there's a few stories that I have, but first I'll start off with the Louisville Youth Philanthropy Council. This will be my third year as a member of the council and the LYPC is what we call it for short, um, strives to educate youth um, in high school, usually kids in Jefferson County, but sometimes students from, we have a few from the surrounding areas, Oldham County and Bullitt County and those surrounding counties. And they strive to educate us about philanthropy. So we actually get to go through the process of grant making five thousand dollars to grant to organizations in Louisville so we go through and pick a mission statement this past year we were on uh, my team was environmental activism so we granted to an organization called uh, Trees Louisville and then Wilderness Louisville so we go through and interview these organizations and actually are able to understand the process behind what goes through in the grant making um, business and with the nonprofits and then another thing that I've been doing over quarantine is participating in a project called Feed the West, which is something that strives to get um, food down to our residents of West Louisville um, in the food desert that we have um, down there. And so I've gone twice with my grandma and brought canned goods and um, just some other toiletries and things like that, that um, those families would need during this hard time. That's super cool, Abby. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Andrew, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, so besides the work that I do on the We Day Youth Forum, which involves her hosting the online we day and visiting various uh, service communities. One of my most memorable experiences was being inspired to start a non-profit initiative in seventh grade as a result of teaching myself German and Sue. I really wanted to just get involved in my community. So I decided to start an initiative called Language Learn that actually connects high school students learning a foreign language like German or Spanish to senior citizens that speak that language. So it was not only memorable because I could actually connect the people in my community, but I was actually tackling two problems at once, not just one, which was high school students learning a foreign language and getting citizens out of the house and communicating. So that was really memorable for me, and I'm hoping to connect even more students now uh, as I'm in high school. So. Yeah, that sounds like a really, really cool program. I mean, it's definitely unique and a unique approach um, that solves two problems. Um, Natalie, do you want to go ahead and speak? Yeah, awesome. So um, I really just got started in activism this past year when I heard about the September 20th climate strike. And at first, being from Frankfurt, I was like, you know what, there's not much I can do because the big hubs of climate activism are Louisville and Lexington. But I realized, I was like, you know what, we need to have something in Frankfurt. 
So I single-handedly organized a strike at the Frankfurt Capitol on September 20th of this past year. And um, it was really insane. We had a state representative there as a speaker. We had um, a, a, one of the leaders of the Kentucky Democratic Party. We had some, some great people as well as a lot of Frankfurt youth and uh, 250 people in attendance, which I was really happy with. And, um, and I know I had some people from Louisville and Lexington who came, who were like, this is great to see something climate related going on in Frankfurt rather than just in Louisville and Lexington. Because I feel like Frankfurt, you know, we are the capital, but we don't really have a voice. And I think we're building that voice. But after I did that strike, it sort of um, spurred me into joining the Kentucky Youth Climate Strike. And we are working on um, really empowering youth to take on the climate crisis and figuring out how to deal with it and um, demanding drastic action to the crisis that we are living in today. That's really amazing. And congratulations on organizing your first strike. That's incredible. Um, Sarah, do you want to go ahead and answer the question? Yeah, so I founded a group called Green Commonwealth, which was to address the issue with Bernheim that's come up. So LG&E has sued Bernheim for a part of their protected land to build an oil pipeline through, and that would involve the destruction of land with five endangered species, as well as the permanent deforestation of a very sensitive part of the park. And it would also break the legal conservation protection on the park and set a legal precedent that puts all legal land protections environmental land protections um, in danger in Kentucky. And so our group is basically, we are trying to reach a younger demographic through social media to raise awareness about this issue and direct that attention to and that energy to petitions and email campaigns. And we also hope to do an in-person protest at some point. Um, that's obviously been halted by everything that's gone on with the COVID-19 pandemic. And then I also was able to this last year participate in Metro Youth Advocates through the Kentucky YMCA, which is an awesome program that puts students in contact with uh, community leaders from all over Louisville and Louisville public employees to address a specific issue. So we address the issue of connectivity um, among the homeless community, with the resources in Louisville and our idea was to basically create a hub system that contained pertinent information in bus stops, libraries, and other public spaces that could make it more easy for people experiencing homelessness to access our city's services for them. That's really amazing. Um, you all have all obviously done some very great advocacy and activism work um, and the stuff that you've done is, is truly incredible and, and inspiring. Um, to that extent, because you all are all so passionate about advocacy and activism, I wanted to ask you um, why you think advocacy and activism are important um, specifically for youth to be involved in. Um, and Natalie, if you wanna go ahead and go first, you can. Sure, so I think that we are truly the catalyst for change. And we're not afraid to say the truth, even if it's hard to hear. Because some people don't want to hear what's right. They just want to be stuck in their ways and not listening to the younger generation coming up and saying, we demand this. Because as youth, we have this moral high ground. Um, we have this, people have to listen to us because we are the future. It's our future that we're talking about. We're also fighting for a cause, and that's what makes, makes us passionate. And what I think distinguishes us from everything, just activists in general, is that we believe in something. And because we believe in something, that's why we fight for it. It's not because we're being paid to do it. It's not because we want the recognition and the title or something to put on our resume. It's something that we truly believe in and that we are going to stop at nothing to do. For sure, that's very, very well said. Um, Sarah, do you wanna go ahead and speak to this question? Yeah, so I think as a generation, more than at any other point in history, we are inundated with information all the time. 
um, especially about human rights abuses. I think it's great that social media is used for advocacy, but I think at the same time, a lot of times it can be very overwhelming to the point of maybe complacency to constantly be seeing information about things, massive problems all over the world that one individual can address. So I think that activism is liberating, especially when it's community focused. It puts you in touch with the skills that you personally have. And it actually a lot of times gives you a personal interface with the person that you are trying to advocate for and volunteer for. And I think that there's really not anything more fulfilling than being able to give your time and actually see a tangible change. I think that's something that's just very important for the human spirit. And I think it's built into our psychology. For sure, completely agree. Um, Andrew, do you wanna go ahead? Yeah, so I think advocacy and activism are so important because it allows young people to get hands-on experience and they can change in their communities that they otherwise wouldn't have gotten. You know, the CEOs, the congressmen and women, the nonprofit leaders of tomorrow are those in the youth who stand up today and um, it's so easy for adults to just discount our opinions, but although we're only a small part of the population, we all understand that we're stakeholders in our future and that we need to decide the best for it. So. For sure, that makes a lot of sense. Advocacy and activism are definitely a good way to get youth involved um, in making change and what they are passionate about um, that isn't really um, restricted by your age. Um, Abby, if you want to go ahead. I think another important aspect is there's a lot of youth who don't know how to get involved with advocacy or activism or a lot of youth have um, stuff that they are passionate about. So I think it's helpful too to see um, leaders in the youth community who can you know show that there are ways and all you have to do is really put yourself out there and look for almost there's probably almost any organization that for whatever you're passionate about there's been an organization created that you can get involved in. Um, but I also think that young people have um, the ability to to have an open mind and our opinions are constantly changing and we're constantly learning and we're growing up in a day and age where there's so much change each and every day. So I think it's very easy and a lot easier for us to adapt to that change and find a way to use it for the betterment of our community and our world. For sure, I completely agree. Um, one thing that in particular sets our generation um, and youth apart is that we have um, ready access to technology that's very advanced compared to past generations um, and specifically social media as Sarah was talking to um, or speaking about. Um, so one thing that I wanted to ask you all is how um, can social media be used effectively um, to advocate for something that you're passionate about um, or to um, you know promote causes that you just care deeply about um, and what role does it play in advocacy and activism, specifically um, speaking to how youth can get involved in advocacy and activism? Um, Sarah, you can go ahead and go first. Thanks. So as I was referencing earlier, I think that awareness is vitally important, but especially with our generation, I think that there's so much information coming at us all the time that that often fosters complacency. I think that social media is excellent when it is used to go beyond just awareness into what one individual specifically is able to contribute and when it puts you in touch with leaders and services that are making a change and outlines for you what you can contribute, how you can contribute, et cetera. For sure, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Abby, if you wanna go ahead. I agree 100% with what Sarah said. I feel like sometimes there's so much information that's being thrown at everybody all at once that it's sometimes a lot harder to digest and actually understand what's coming from where and who's saying what. Um, but I do think that social media has ha played a big role in educating people about different issues in different parts that are going on in different parts of the world. Um, but I think that social media is used to its best when there's pages like We Day Kentucky or pages like you um, of organizations that have ac um, access to certain resources or they can put you in connections like what Sarah was saying with different places and not only educating you on the topic but also giving you steps to be a catalyst for change and going in the right direction rather than just providing you with information. For sure, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, specifically pages that are community oriented like um, We Day Kentucky is. Um, Andrew, if you wanna go ahead. 
Yeah, so I'm, I mean, I totally agree what you guys have just said. Um, the most amazing part of being able to advocate on social media is this is how it is to posting on your story. It's the fact that someone hundred way can advocate for the same rules and ideas that you have. And I think as we, we've grown from, you know, the iPhone first you seeing to Instagram or Facebook, the most important development is like Abby said, that we can provide so many ways to teach advocacy to people because people aren't bored knowing how, bored knowing how to advocate. We can just take the, the human spirit and we can advocate it teach them how to do best. So it's been a great platform for change. And um, although it seems like things, things have gotten worse with 20, things have actually gotten better because we've learned how to adapt even more with social media over time. I'm hoping that in the next coming years, us having adapted during these difficult times will really come out and shine different ways that we've made a difference in our communities. So, For sure, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Natalie, if you want to go ahead and speak to social media. Yeah, so I think social media is great when it's used correctly. But in our age, day and age that's like completely imbued with technology, I feel like the importance of social media in advocacy sometimes is overstressed because if because you know people are on devices so much of the day. It's like you know always putting pushing stuff out there that sometimes the message gets um disturbed because there's so much of it and sometimes when people are hearing the same thing over and over from all these different sources yeah sometimes it teaches people but other times it can make people think that they aren't interested in this cause anymore or they don't like this person anymore because it's just a constant barrage oh, like wait hold up I I'm not interested in this anymore because you are pushing at it at me so much but I feel like in small doses like when used to amplify an action or um, you know show what happened and show ways to get involved then it's used well but I think it all comes down to advocacy and activism. You have to have in-person things. You have to have person to person because that's like, that's what we're trying to get with social media is more connections. And in order to have connections, you have to be in person for, for advocacy and activism to really work. For sure, completely agreed. Um, I feel like a lot of times social media is overused um, to the extent that um, false information is spread and dispersed. Um, because you might see something that looks really great on your friend's story and just repost it on your story without actually checking the facts behind it. And it turns out that it's completely false. Um, and obviously, like Andrew said, hundreds and hundreds of people are going to see that from your story and from everybody else's stories. Um, and that just furthers the dispersion of that false information. But it can also be a great catalyst for change in teaching people how to be advocates and how to act, um, advocate for causes that they are very um, passionate about and care deeply about. Um, so it's, it, there's definitely pros and cons to social media. Um, but like Natalie just mentioned, it's important to remember that it's not all about, you know, posting something on your story. Like you have to get out in person and actually fight for things that you care about, whether that's volunteering or going to a protest, um, going to a lecture, just informing yourself more. But it's very important that you, you know, get off of your phone, get off of Instagram and Facebook, stop posting on your story and actually do something and try to actually make a change. Um, so for the last question that I had for you all today, um, it kind of relates to what's happening now um, with COVID and also with the Black Lives Matter movement um, and the deaths of like George Floyd and Breonna Taylor um, and Ahmaud Arbery. Um, it's, it's interesting to see how social media has been used throughout this time um, because we have all been separate and social connections have kind of um, been going downhill because we can't see each other in person, how social media is being used to advocate um, for things that people are very passionate about, obviously. So I wanted to ask you all, um, how do you think advocacy and activism um, and the importance of advocacy and activism will change um, because of COVID-19 and because of how prevalent the Black Lives Matter movement has been on social media? Um, Andrew, if you want to go ahead and go first. Yeah, so I mean, like I said before, we've really adapted to these times for better or for worse. It seems like although we 
we've been able to get a lot. I've seen so much increased advocacy on social media and the person is crazy. But it's also for better or for worse. There's a lot of disinformation that's coming out and affecting our real advocacy, you know, eventually will come to infect us in person. And that's dangerous because we don't want this information, you know, our groups, our organizations, and our institutions. So uh, it's definitely changing and it will be interesting to see how it changes in the coming years. So I'm not too sure, but I hope that um, we'll, we'll take the path on advocacy and spreading the right information that we want and making real change, not just posting to our stories. For sure, I completely agree. Um, Sarah, do you wanna go ahead? So I'm a big believer in the importance of community when it comes to volunteering and making a change and starting on a small scale. So I hope that this crisis and the way that it's limited mobility and our ability to meet in mass will help us to return to the importance of kindness and focus on mutual support with the people around us because it's not a crisis that's occurring halfway across the world or even something that's happening in another state or on a federal level. It's our neighbors and our family and our friends who might be the ones who are unemployed or don't have enough food or who are close to eviction. So I hope that this will refocus the scope of what we do in many ways to where I believe activism is most effective, which is in our community immediately around us. For sure, I completely agree. Um, Natalie, do you wanna go ahead? Yeah, for sure. So I think that when COVID started and we were all stuck at home by ourselves with our family, it was a time of a lot of realizations about ourselves, about our community, about society. And I know I had them, I'm sure everybody had them, but I know it was like looking in a mirror at yourself and at the world around you. And I think for so many people, they realized because they had so many, much time on their hands that they didn't like what they saw, that society was turning down a path that we didn't like and that wasn't healthy and that wasn't going to work for much longer. And um, I think the deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor really just were the catalyst for change because people had been so tired of it. They'd seen these underlying problems in our society and those deaths just, it, that was the final push over the edge. And that's obviously the start of the Black Lives Matter movement. That's what got people hyped up. People had something to fight for now because they saw that this is something that we can do. And so it shows that people, even though they don't want to, you know, maybe don't show it all the time, that we are tired of what's going on and we are tired of not having a voice and i think this movement that's created because of covid and because of those realizations and because of being alone and not being able to connect with people and you know fight in person for what we believe in it's created an even more lasting movement and it's created new activists who are born in this time to this revolutionary ideas and i think that that's really going to continue on and um we're not done fighting we're nowhere near done fighting for sure i completely agree i feel like covid kind of took the distractions away because before it was very easy to distract yourself with your daily tasks and going to school and you know oh, i have homework i don't have time to um, be an activist or advocate for something um and now that covid is you know has happened and we're all stuck at home and we can't meet um, en masse, then it's, it's harder to ignore things that are bothering you. And I feel like that's definitely going to change the like socio-political climate after this um, because people can't go back to ignoring it like they had before COVID. Um, so I think that's, that's a really good point. And I think that George Floyd and Breonna Taylor's murders did act as a catalyst for change. And we're gonna see that change continue to evolve. Um, Abby, if you wanna go ahead. Um, I think that along with everything that everyone else has says, the COVID-19 um, pandemic has, like Sarah was talking about, has allowed everyone to realize this isn't something that's just affecting, you know, Kentucky. It's just not affecting the United States. And that's something 
we talked about with you know school everybody at the very when school started getting canceled everybody was like what are we going to do and you know it was easy we just thought okay everybody is going through this that's not just in the u.s it's all over the world and so i think this might be one of the first times where everybody no matter your country of origin no matter your race no matter your gender no matter anything everyone has been affected um some more harmfully than others but everybody has been affected by this pandemic which gives everyone kind of a meeting point to understand and so I think that's why part of the reason why the Black Lives Matter movement has taken off so far as it has, because I think COVID-19 during this time of pa the pandemic, everybody has time, had, like Natalie said, has had time for self-reflection and to really look at what's going on and how that's affecting um, not only yourself, but others around you. And that it's important to come together as a community, not only um, if the issue is affecting you or not, but it, you could be something that's just you're passionate about and you need to take that time to um, go out into this, you protest or get involved with organizations like Feed the West or anything in your community to help against any uh, problem that you are passionate about. So I think COVID-19 and being, you know, in quarantine has allowed people to think some more and maybe actually be able to educate themselves and realize that what they were missing out on or what they, you know, didn't, weren't able to focus on during the times of the pandemic and um, being all busy with sports and school and life seems like it passed you by. For sure, COVID definitely has acted as like a unifying force because we're all going through the same thing um, to varying ext extents, but we can all kind of feel how um, it's affecting everybody else. Um, so with that, I believe that should close up our panel. Um, if anybody who's watching this is interested in um, advocating for a cause that they're particularly passionate about, um, you should definitely check out the four organizations um, that were mentioned today. We're going to be tagging them um, in the caption below. Um, so thank you all so much for joining the panel and participating. It's been great. Thank you, guys.